Excellent connection. All right, <clears throat> testing, testing. Okay, I think it's gonna work. We're gonna do a live stream. We are gonna do a live stream to recover data from this iPhone 11 Pro because the 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max are a real pain to recover data, but we're gonna do it anyway. I'm, in fact, I just finished recording a video that shows you the top five roadblocks to repair that Apple has put in our way with the iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max. Um, and we're going to loud and clear. Good. And we're going to uh, edit that and show you those 11 roadblocks to repair, um, the five roadblocks to repair. But since we're here, I thought, Let's fix the next one in the queue, this one. And so you guys can kind of see that live if you're into the live stream. So we have a channel YouTube editor now. So we want to hear from you what you guys like to like to see. Check this out, though. This is this is cool. We built and designed our iSesimo, the iPad Rehab iSesimo. These guys just came in and they are on store.ipadrehab.com. Look, it worked out, the warranty voiding tool. So these are the authentic, legitimate, made from the real ISSMO people, not in China. And these, this is my new favorite tool now. All right, so we've got this is an Alipin Pro here, and the complaint is sudden death while it was on the charger, and it's got some really important pictures on it. So this is one of those ones where Apple says, no, you can't recover the data. There's nothing you can do. It's impossible. And we're going to see if that is true or not. If the iPhone 11 Pro has that type of issue. What type of issue? All right, so using the warranty voiding tool, I think we'd already don't need to do that. Yeah, I lifted up this, but uh, that's all I know so far. I started disassembling it and thought, you know what, let's do a live stream. All right, so here's our 11 Pro. We're starting to see these now that they are coming off of their warranty. All right, greetings from the Netherlands. That is far away, very far away from Rochester. All right. So we're going to grab the DC power supply and we got to swap out. This is the old squid and we got to swap in the new squid that has the 11 Pro connector. So of course 11 Pro has a new battery that's just a shade different than the iPhone XS. All right, so we'll grab this squid connector and connect that in and we see high current consumption which is a very classic problem with the iPhone 11 Pro surprisingly they get water damaged even though they're supposed to be like super awesome for water and they also don't like to be charged they get charger damage and they don't like to be dropped or run over so these guys are just as fallible as every other iPhone that we've ever worked on, now featuring new roadblocks to repair that we'll go over as we come across those. All right, so let's see if we can go to the microscope. All right, under the microscope. Now, one thing that's different with the 11 Pro is their main power rail. It is the battery. So it doesn't, you know, VCC main goes all the way to the battery. All right, we've got zero on that side, zero on that side. So we have a short to ground on this power rail that is VCC main. So VCC main goes all the way out here to the battery connector. That means this board needs to come out. It's a split board, so maybe we only have to, maybe we don't have to fix anything at all. Maybe we only have to split the board 
and we've got a bottom board problem, then we don't need to fix it because the top board is where the data is. So the top board has the stuff, the good stuff. It's got the CPU and this thing right here. There's your, there's your, all your data, your dog pictures right there, the NAND, and all the good stuff, including the touch connector. Yay! But don't get too excited. Remember, there are five big trolls, five roadblocks to repair, and one of them is that despite having all of the good stuff on the top board, everything that you would need to be able to recover data from your iPhone 11 Pro just on the top board, too bad. Apple says no can do. I'm not letting it be that easy for you guys. Apple forces or programs the device to not unlock and accept the passcode without the input of the bottom board. And that really, that really stinks. All right, so I'm going to take out these last couple of screws and get this opened up. So how many of you guys have been working on iPhone 11 Pro? What kinds of signature problems have you started to see? Ken says, we have lots of boot looping phones since iOS 14, mostly iPhone 8. Yep, we've seen with iOS 14 some of that, some more software incompatibilities. And, you know, the, some of them will fail to pass an update. Or the, 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 they won't get an iTunes error, but they can't load the update. That is actually solvable, or it has been um, for us lately. All right, let's get this board out. All right, can we see any of that? iPad Rehab, you do great work. Been following you for some time. I'm swapping screens on my iPhone, but I have an iPad that I'm not sure what to do with it. Screen does all sorts of colors. Well, it's like we say, rule number one. You don't have a board problem until you can prove that you don't have a parts problem. All right, let me see what thing is not quite unclipped yet over here to get this sucker out. All right, there we go. Here's our beautiful iPhone 11 Pro. Look at that, it's so tiny. That's your iPhone 11 Pro. I mean, it really is not much bigger than an Oreo. All right, so this has got a, a short circuit, and the next thing we're going to do is split the board to see whether the short circuit is on the top half of the board or the bottom half. So what I love about the Sunshine Bricks is that truth, they didn't go out of business just as predicted, so we were selling the iPhone 10 blocks and then the 10s blocks and Sunshine still is around, still kicking, and they did come up with the iPhone 11 Pro blocks. So this is makes it so that you can continue to use your iPhone, um, your Sunshine preheater even with the 11 series. All right, so we're gonna heat that up. So this is a live stream 11 Pro with some sort of a short on the main power rail. It doesn't look, look at this housing though. It doesn't look, I mean, it looks absolutely flawless. No cracked screen, no sign of drop, no bend, no nothing other than the crime of being an iPhone and getting plugged in and asked to charge the battery. That's a big no-no. They don't like to do that. And that one has been, uh, that's how this one got into trouble. So the note says, says that it was, was charging, got up to about 70%. The next time it was dead, not able to revive, and it's not the battery. And this guy would like to get the last pictures of his dog off of this poor, poor iPhone 11 Pro. All right, so we're going to let this heat up. I set the preheater to like 200 degrees, but I don't let it go all the way up to 200. So it's kind of on its way up when it gets to be about one, 
I don't know, 170 or so, then we'll see whether or not it will split apart. All right, any news about iTunes Error 14? No, or at least not really. We did put a lot of time and effort and working with you guys in the community. If you have any leads or anything that you would like for us to look into, let us know. So we um, had Mark spend some time uh, following up with one of you guys about a way to tunnel into the the iPhone, which we were able to do, and it kind of became even more depressing, where what we found is that it looks like with error 14 that the, the required passcode gets overwritten during that update, and when it can't finish, then it no longer has that passcode. So it seems like even more depressing than it originally was. So error 14, Bert, do you guys send ZXW keys on the weekend? Yes, we do, because Katrina can send you your instant ZXW code even while she's making dinner. She can bake a cake and send your ZXW code right now. In fact, you could test it out and see how long does it take Katrina to see a notification and send you your code. If you go to store.ipadrehab.com, click ZXW, and then check out. All right, now let's see if we can get this to split apart. All right, so that's not in fantastic focus. All right, so we're just going to hold down the SIM tray and then see if it comes right up. Boom, there, easy, easy. All right, and that looks like it got up. These, these have to be calibrated, so my 170 degrees might not be the same as your 170 degrees, but there's the deal. Let's take a look under the microscope and see if we see anything that looks beat up or burned up or destroyed or what. All right, so we're looking around. This is the top board, so this is the data containing board, the important one. Well, this is a weird looking, I don't know, looks like some kind of dried up tear. That's what it really looks like. Look at that. Like that's, I'm not sure what's up with that. Just kind of an odd artifact. Probably not doing anything, but there you go. Look around, look around. I mean, it looks like the entire iPhone is one big chip, a little chip, some buddies. I mean, it's just so not much to it. Look at that. There's not a lot of failure points, especially not on this top board. I mean, this looks great. Nothing wrong with that. How about the bottom board? All right, so we're looking at the bottom board, and the bottom board also looks great. Now, I've seen a couple of these that were just sudden death VCC main shorts. So let's go ahead and measure VCC main, which this guy down here is on VCC main. So we're going to take a quick reading. Let's see with a trust based multimeter. I don't remember what side is main. Uh, I guess it's that side because this side you can tell is ground. There we go. VCC main is 0, 0.000 on diode mode, which tells us that indeed our short circuit is on the bottom board. So here's one of the trolls that's going to be in my top five roadblocks to repair video coming up is this. This seems like it should be easy, right? Because here's our problem. We have a short circuit on the bottom board, but the bottom board is just the RF stuff. Who cares? The top board is where all the data is. Yay! The top board has the CPU, the EEPROM. It has the battery connector, the charge port. It has the screen and the digitizer connector. Yay! So in theory, all we have to do is this. And let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's say, can't we boot this up? Because now that we've pulled off that bottom board, We've separated the short away from the top board. It's, this board doesn't have a short anymore. I've got to move this. So let's try it. Let's hook up. Just Let's just get the data. Let's just take it right off. So we're going to do charge port. Come on, charge port. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll be really easy. And I have the shortest stream ever. All right, let's see what happens. 
We're going to prompt to boot, prompt, 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 and it's going to boot right up. Go ahead. There's an Apple logo. Awesome. All right, let's look up the passcode so that we're ready to go. All right, it's going to ask for a four-digit passcode. I know what the passcode is, and we're going to be able to recover the data right now. Or will we? What's the deal? What's going to happen? Let's see. Who already knows while we're waiting for this thing to, to boot up? Biggest issues that we've had, says Ken, with the iPhone 10, 10s, and 11 is front flex, premature failure. Front flex. All right. Um, let's see. Booting, booting. All right. Oh, it booted up. Okay. So easy, so easy. Now we're just going to, we're going to swipe for passcode. All right. It's asking for the four digit passcode. I'm going to type that four digit passcode in right now. And the four digit passcode is, here we go. Last digit. All right, so it doesn't accept the four-digit passcode. And it has taken me to this swipe up to recover, which actually I have not seen that happen before. So maybe it, I don't know what it, what it will do in this scenario. But here's what I have seen before. I have seen iPhone 11 Pro erase themselves. So you have to be careful. We have, you know, we had one that we put kind of just in a jig like this and it erased itself. So for that reason, we try to be really careful. And if we can fix the bottom board and put it back on its native bottom board, then we'll try to do that. So notice what happened with this one. It will not open up. I can enter the right passcode. And it will, it's wanting to, to swipe up to recover right now. I don't want to take the risk on this one that it's going to erase itself. So I'm going to disconnect. But if we were to let it boot up again, it'll do the same thing. It'll show me the lock screen. It'll let me enter the passcode, but it will hang on the last digit of the passcode. So it will not accept the passcode when you just have the top board by itself. So let's go back. Let's go back and say, all right, I don't want it to do that swipe up to recover. It might be fine. In fact, it probably would be fine. And I don't know what it would do if it doesn't hear from that bottom board, but I have seen one erase itself before. All right, so what do we need to do then? If I put it back on the bottom board right now, I've rebuilt the short. So what I'm gonna do is try to clear the short here from the bottom board. So where is the short? I don't know. We're going to have to figure that out. So we're going to look for, look for some heat. Where is the microscope? Here we go. All right. So I think I know that this guy, this guy here is on main and this guy here is also on main. So Let's see if we can just solder a wire right there and see what is getting hot. What do you think it will be, chat? Which one of these beautiful looking, nothing burned, nothing ugly, nothing weird, which of these components has decided that it feels like being a wire? I don't know. And this is really tough because, I don't know, we've had four or five cases just like this that are sudden death on the charger for no reason. So they're unexpected. It's not like you did anything. It's not like you, you know, like, well, it's my fault. I took it down a water slide. What can you expect? It's none of that. It's just absolutely sudden, sudden death. Death by charger on these 11 Pros. Granted, if you do take it on a water slide, Despite the whole, no, you can take it underwater for half an hour. It's fine. That is fake news. We see wet 11 Pros just as much as all these other phones. All right. 
So we are gonna stick a wire on here so that we can inject a little voltage and see, see where the thinnest wire is. See if we can come up with a cure for this bottom board. All right, we gotta get this wire on here. All right, so we've soldered a wire right there. And now I gotta get the insulation off of the, the other stuff. This is the bottom board that we're working on right now. We're trying to cure the bottom board because iPhone 11 top board, Apple in their infinite wisdom decided to make it so that you can't recover data just from the top board. It will not accept the passcode. All right, so we're going to It will not accept the passcode with just the top board. So, we're going to try and fix the bottom board. Ned says that he guesses a cap near a speaker amp. We'll see. One of the caps next to Wi-Fi. Let's see. Maybe you're right. Um, the only one that I can remember, this is a bad idea, but the only one that I remember is this one, the one that I've soldered the wire to. That's always fun. When you solder the wire to the thing that is the cause of the short. All right. But that's also the only one that I kind of have memorized right now. Okay. So I see high current consumption when I touch the... Uh, the alligator clamp. I'm going to get my camera and here is our camera. All right, now we've, now we've learned another dude. Look at that. Let's make it so that you guys can see. All right. Let's get a really crisp resolution. Like you can see that. See it? This one might be a good one for freeze spray. We haven't used freeze spray in a long time. Let's do a freeze spray because it's winter time. It's Christmas. Christmas is the season of freeze spray. The beautiful season of freeze spray in Rochester, New York. And I think I have some right here. Mm, maybe that's not enough. Where is another one? Hmm. Let's see. Is this enough? Probably not, but let's see. Oh, come on. One more job. Come on, you can do it. No. All right, let's grab another free spray. Aha! Got it. Here we go. Now we're cooking. Winter Wonderland for Christmas. All right, now let's look. Let's see. Not nearly as as clear as the thermal camera. There he is. Did you see him raise his hand? Right here, this guy. Here, let's do it again. All right, all eyes on this guy. Let's see. Let's get him crispy cold. All right, now watch. Look at that, it's super obvious, see it? That guy right there. Chestnuts, chestnuts roasting on an open VCC main short. All right, off with his head. 
We have no room for such nonsense on our board. All right. Let's take it off. All right. How much storage have you for data recovery? Us? Oh, an extraordinary amount and constantly growing. In fact, that's what I was doing on, on uh, like the middle of the night on uh, Black Friday or Cyber Monday or whatever it is. I was going, oh, wow, look at that. It came, it came apart in half. I woke up like in the middle of the night. Oh, my God, I forgot to buy uh, on sale SSDs from Amazon on Cyber Monday. So luckily, since we're on the East Coast, there was, you know, like an, an 20 minutes left of, uh, there we go, 20 minutes left of, Cyber Monday. So in the middle of the night, I was able to order more storage to keep this ship floating. All right, now let's see. Did that actually clear our main short or not? Quick question, anybody who knows, is it bad to use Flux that has passed the expiration date? Uh, no, I mean, who knows? Uh, the stream's current bit rate is lower than the recommended one. Hmm. All right, let's go back over here and we're gonna do the trust-based diode mode reading. Diode mode reading is 0.333, yay! All right, so we've healed the bottom board. Now I'm interested, aren't you, to see what happens when we put this now fixed native bottom board. Will it now accept the passcode or is it still going to do that, you know, swipe up to recover nonsense? Let's find out. Let's see what happens when we put this together. All right, so now let's go to hand cam and we're going to assemble this, right? Here's something else that trolled us for a long time. These things. One, of, one or the other, and I don't remember which one. One of these straight up two or three hundred dollar things that we got early on straight up doesn't work. So if you put your boards together in the little sandwich, it will do the same thing it does with just the bottom board, which is hang on that passcode. Now we've seen hang on passcode before, right? Everybody's seen hang on passcode is what an iPhone 10 does that has an NFC circuit problem. So we spent so much time trying to solve the non-existent NFC problems uh, just to find out, nope, bad jig. So now the ones that we sell are only the, uh, these ones here, the iPhone 11 Pro, the Chen Li ones. All right, here is another thing we learned the hard way. The charge port. The charge port has to be connected to the battery or it doesn't work at all. It's as if you don't even have a charge port. So these... $50 charge ports now, you gotta plug them in. That's another part that is difficult to source out there that is sometimes wrong. All right, now we're gonna plug in our screen. And let's see. But each one of these little things just takes forever to figure out, you know, to, to figure out why does it not accept the last digit of the passcode? just a tremendous amount of troubleshooting. All right, let's plug in this. In theory. All right, while I'm letting this boot up, I will ask you guys a morality question. So you can hear right now, maybe if the microphone picks it up, you can hear the exciting sounds of the next door neighbor, the dog groomer, and the dogs are barking their heads off, like they always are. So we have installed speakers. All right, let's see, will it boot up? Show me the Apple logo. All right, let's see if it boots up and will it take the passcode just like it is right now, now that we solve that bottom board. So top board plus bottom board. Uh-oh, what's, what's that? What? Oh, no. Let's see what happens if I hold the battery in there. All right, mm, you should be able to boot. It seems to have normal charging current, so I think it should be able to boot. 
So we've got this receiver installed that connects to speakers around here, but because this space used to be one hair salon back in the day with our neighbor, the dog groomer, the other speakers are over there on her side. All right, so boot it up. So she came over here asking us if we could stop playing Christmas music on the receiver because it plays over there for the dogs. Should I say, okay, yeah, it's pretty uncool to play music that you might not like, which by the way was like Christmas jazz. So should I never play Christmas music on the receiver again? Or should I say, screw you, these dogs are, in, are constantly barking over here and I don't really care what you do and don't want to hear. I don't want to hear barking dogs and crank it up. What do you think we should do? All right. Let's see what chat thinks about my moral dilemma while I check to see whether or not it will take the passcode. All right. So remember, we've already tried this. We've already booted up top board only and we entered in the passcode and it would and it doesn't work. It hangs on that last digit. Now, top board only on this particular one, um, would it, it took me to the swipe up to recover. That might work, but it also makes me nervous because I've seen that erase a phone before. So I'm going to type in the passcode and see, does it accept the passcode when it has the bottom board? So let's find out. It does. Look at that. See, now we're in, right? So just to be clear, top board only hangs at the last digit of the passcode. There's nothing wrong here. There's nothing wrong with NFC. There's nothing wrong with any of the top board at all. The top board never had a problem, but it won't recover data unless now you also fix the bottom board or put it on a working bottom board. So there we go. So this one now we have a path to data and we will be able to recover the data, except for another troll, another troll that's going to be in our top five Apple roadblocks to repair with the iPhone 11 Pro. Who knows what it is? This thing is not going to stay on long enough for me to get a backup. So I got one more roadblock to figure out, and that is it will not stay on unless, not connect it now, but unless I boot it with an already connected PowerFlex. So we got to have another thing. We got to have this connected in order to get it to avoid, avoid that three minute reboot loop. But after that, then we will have defeated all of the trolls. So we plug this in and man, this flex, if you ever try to dig one of these out of an 11 Pro, that is a total nightmare. And these things are crazy expensive. Like they're, you know, the charge port, when we bought the charge port, they were $100 for the charge port and it didn't work. So these are, it's just been this like monumental right to repair problem where it would be so easy for Apple to say, sure, something like this might happen. We built a phone that we said is water damaged, but it gets, it, it, we said it can't be water damaged, but they get water damaged all the time. They built a phone that will die if you charge it. You know, it just, this, this capacitor felt like being a wire. While the guy didn't do anything, he was just sitting it on the charger. So they, they just self-destruct. And then Apple is telling you, sorry for your data, nothing we can do. We built you a phone that self-destructed or t told you that it could survive the, a trip in the bathtub, but that was a fat lie, ha ha. And then they make it so difficult to do this job where they could have programmed it so that, hey, look, I think all of these charger damage is the bottom board. They could have made it so that the top board, you could recover data. The top board has the data. The top board has the CPU, which holds the passcode. The top board has the EEPROM, which is part of that secure train of trust. It's got everything it needs. It has the touch screen, it's got the battery, it's got the charger, it's got the charging, it's got everything it needs. All Apple needed to do was just say, fine, boot up if you have your top board functions only, and then later worry about your bottom board stuff. We don't need to make a phone call in order to recover data, except now you do. You got to fix that bottom board. 
So uh, that's all. Nice, e easy job. Well, I'm not sure it's an easy job, but sure. This job looks easy, but I'll tell you, we had, it, we had one just like this sit here for six months, seven months, nine months, I'm not sure, because just like this. During that nine months, it took all kinds of troubleshooting to figure out this brand new thing here doesn't work. Who knew? To sort out each pin and what does it do? Oh, it's just monumentally crazy. Or even this three minute reboot. In order to figure that out, well, what is it? What's it doing? Why is it doing that? It doesn't tell you. You have to go on a hunt looking for, all oh, right, it's missing some sensor data, but which one? Yeah, we have to dissect, dissect an 11 Pro down to this just to harvest parts out because you can't, how are you supposed to figure this out? Let me just go order all those flexes. Well, Apple won't sell you a quality controlled flex that definitely works. So you have to get these mystery flexes from who knows where and just hope that they work and they cost a hundred bucks each. It's crazy. So Apple's road box to repair, repair on the iPhone 11 Pro are crazy, but they don't yet, at least, they don't make it impossible. So don't let them tell you that your iPhone 11 Pro is not recoverable. It probably is recoverable, but it, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna take a lot to get it. So there you go. All right. Just make speakers louder for dogs. All right, that's a good idea. All right. You knew the dogs were there when you moved in. No, I didn't. I was here first. Throw the ball back in her court and say nicely to quiet the dogs down. You'll be happy to turn the music down. Uh, no, we were here and she moved in and brought dogs. It was not fun. Tell them to unhook the speakers on their side. That's what I did. I said, look, I didn't put these speakers in. You don't want those speakers to work. You should take those speakers out. Uh, the root of the issue is the charging port. Oh, the root of the issue is all sorts of issues. I'm not really sure. Um, is there a way to turn off or turn down the volume on her speakers? Don't know, don't care. Uh, why can't you download iPhone data into any wireless flash drive stick? You can, after you put it on a computer. All right, iPad one generation. I just fixed one of those. Just, the, I fixed an iPad one within the last two weeks. I need to get the photos out. Someone told me it's the charging chip and that it's not fixable. Is that true? No, I've never seen an iPad one charging chip. I don't even think it has a charging chip. I don't even know what that means. Uh, no, you should find somebody that can fix iPad ones and have them fix it. In fact, didn't, I might have done a video on that iPad one. I did. Yeah, it was the video I did with Mark, the Florida man video. That's fixing an iPad one. Yes. Problem is I bet that dividing the wall is not fire rated. Oh, it's not. It is a single piece of paneling that has a hole in it. So there's absolutely no division at all, except there's a trash can in front of the hole. So it's mostly a piece of paneling, not plywood, paneling and a trash can. That's what, that's the, that's the kind of landlord that, that we have had. I see, it's Christmas, so definitely we need good Christmas music and not dog noises. Yes, exactly. Um, if she has an issue with Christmas jazz, how would she like it if you cranked up some Iron Maiden? Listen, Mark, when we set this up, he put on sounds of like the jungle, like jungle animals, and then he put on this whole thing called cats screeching and crying. Those dogs uh, wigged out a little bit. And she didn't know what was going on, so she spent some time up in the ceiling looking for the cat that was like stuck in the ceiling. Mark felt bad, so he's uh, he's he's fine. Uh, all right, so yeah, offer to remove her speaker, and then you have two. Yeah. Um, alrighty. Okay, so Apple has to pay a fine of ten million in Italy. Good. I mean, flash drives that have Wi-Fi built in and battery and you can wireless download data. I guess so. All right. Happy Christmas to the iPad Rehab Posse. All right. Okay. So here we go. iPhone 11 Pro is fixed. 
and look soon for our new teenage video editor, Parker, who is really doing a phenomenal job with editing and it's super fun to like have an editor. Um, so let us know if there's something that you would like to see on our channel, but he's gonna edit a video that will show you just in a tight little short video, the top five roadblocks to repair that Apple has thrown in our in <laughs> thrown in front of us here as we work on the 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max as they come off of warranty. We're gonna start seeing more and more of those in independent repair. So follow along and we'll do more of these 11 Pro signature problems. If you've worked on some and you killed yourself all afternoon trying to figure something out and you figure it out, let us know in the comments because it's this idea of signature problems, the common colds that these phones are gonna get. None of us have seen them while they've been going back to Apple under their one year warranty, but that's over now. So it's time for us to work together and start amassing the community collection of our experience base so that all of us can turn what used to absolutely be a tyrannical headache into short, sweet, quick jobs that are, um, that are efficient. So let's work together. If you've got a fix, then let us know in the comments and I will see you guys next time.